So, speaking of the NES Classic Edition, uh, a user on YouTube named Daft Mike put out a video. He's been playing it for a while. It's just coincidental. Uh, he did his own mini NES Classic console, which is basically, looks like, from the outside, it's a mini NES. Yeah, it's 3D printed. 3D printed console, and inside you have the good old Raspberry Pi, and it's running uh, RetroPie. Which is, I guess, the front end that an emulator is installed uh, to play all your games. We've we, we've seen we used before. it before we've, we've uh, during it, a convention. Yeah. yeah, so it's cute because the timing was the same timing, so we figured oh, I'm going to put out the early version of it. So the difference between this and obviously an NES Classic Edition, where it only has 30 games built in, this has all the games that are preloaded onto this. This is what's kind of unique and cool and kitschy about this, but will never ever happen. Nintendo would never do this. So. And, and we'll get into why. He also did 3D printing of mini NES cartridges, which are cute. They have the labels on them and everything else. Uh, so using an NFC, I guess, scanner, reader, uh, it puts the phone to the cartridge, puts the cartridge into the console, and the console plays that game you put in. So bas basically it's an instruction on the cartridge telling the RetroPie what game to play, what game to launch. Yep. And he did it for not just... NES games, I believe I saw in the video, he did one for uh, Pokemon Red. Uh, basically, any any ROM, uh, he could put any any ROM. Um, uh, technically, if he wanted to put a Turbo Graphics game sure. on that uh, Pokemon Red cartridge, it would load it up. But yeah, it's adorable. It has a little door. Um, the power button and the reset button work as they should. And he had a stack. Mario 1, Mario 2, Mario 3, Zelda. And you put the cartridge in. It even pushes down, which I thought was adorable. That's with cute. the proper spring loading. It touches it to the NFC portion of the, uh, the NFC reader. You hit power and it loads up just as it should. And he even made these adorable little mini... NES yeah, controllers. That, which was probably the most questionable part about it because, yeah, you want to keep it all mini, but you can't really play platform as well on a little mini controller. No. <laughs> or Mike Tyson's punch out. It might be tough to do that. But people were like, oh, this is what Nintendo should have done. Okay, let's pump the brakes here a bit. You do really want Nintendo to re release old software on physical media again. Do you really want to go that far? <laughs> let's think about that. Think about who actually wants that. Collectors want that. And that's it. That's where it sort of begins and ends there. Uh, because you're going to pay a huge premium. Not just for Nintendo to then produce the cartridges. They're not 3D printed. They'll be mass produced. They'll be probably a little bit cheaper. They have to get the licensing first. If it's not a first-party game. they got to get the, the licensing and do the artwork for the, for the cartridge. They have to get all that. Then they have to get their NES Mini and put all the technology in there in order to load the cartridge and play it. That's going to add cost. They have to, or in this case, if you have all the software loaded on here already and all the games, that means they have to pre-license all the games that are going to be included for this to basically activate the game. So they couldn't do that. Or maybe they could. Which basically means you'd be paying not $60 for your uh, little mini NES. You'd probably be paying $300 to get all these games pre-loaded on it. And then to have cartridges activate them. Because you're paying for licensing of hundreds of games. Contrary-wise, I think they, they could... I don't know if they would, but all you have to do is look at the Amiibo craze. Um, I think people would pay. I mean, let's look at it this way. If they're charging $5 a ROM for Virtual Console and people are doing it, and they're charging $13 for an Amiibo, I think someone would pay $13. And as far as I can tell, and maybe I'm wrong, but you should be able to do this the reverse way of the way he did it. You should be able to put the ROM on the actual cartridge and have the NFC reader read the ROM, load it into the system, and play it. Do you, um, do you really think these would be only $13 in store if Nintendo, if Nintendo came out with cartridges with I, games on it? I think they could do it for 15 What do the Game Boy Advance re-releases cost? Uh, the Game Boy Advance re-releases are seven ninety nine. No, when, when, when you actually bought the cartridges back in the day. Oh, they were forty nine ninety, thirty nine ninety nine. But I'm just saying, Nintendo could technically do it, and they could do it without without the the price going to the moon. I'm saying that back then they didn't have a virtual console to do it on. But it was the same premise, though. It was software that pre-existed fifteen years before Metroid, Donkey Kong, and they're slapping it on a cartridge. On a physical and, cartridge that costed more. 
before the Virtual Console existed and before Nintendo kind of embraced this ROM thing. NFC is a lot cheaper. Now, I'm not saying that they should do it or they would do it. I'm just saying I don't think it would necessarily be as expensive as you're thinking it would be. I think it would be because they have to, again, they have to go back and license these games for this. It's, I don't think it's as simple as, okay, we already have this license. We can automatically put it on a cartridge. They got to probably renegotiate all that. Too. Oh, I'm not arguing. I'm not arguing with you about I, third party games. I'm just yes. saying if they wanted to do it with first person, with, oh, with yeah, first, first party, first party games, they can do whatever the hell they want. Yeah, I'm saying it, first it, party it, games, it would be a cute idea. Sure. Um, but yes, obviously, if we're just looking at the NES Classic and we're looking at third-party games, yeah, obviously this is. I'm not saying yes, it's out of it's out of the realm of possibility. I just don't think if they wanted to do it with say first-party games, it would be as expensive as you're thinking. I would be, I would be looking at a twenty-dollar price point. I, I think that's what Nintendo would probably shoot seeing for and probably get it. Seeing as how people are are, are paying thirteen dollars for amiibos that have yet to really do much of goddamn anything, I think I think there are people out there who would pay twenty for a, yeah, a cute for little Mario game. cartridge. Sure. Yeah. And, and they put a little box in it, maybe a mini instruction book. I don't know. Okay, that would be uh, fucking adorable. I'd pay twenty dollars. Thank you. For that. So you're the idiot who would buy for twenty dollars. I would. I would. Do and that. that's why it's not a good idea because if you had to get all those thirty NES uh, games on the classic edition in cartridge form on it, you're paying hundreds of dollars. For Okay, fair and enough. most people wouldn't do that. But again, yeah, they, for Tech Mobile, they have to probably go back and renegotiate that. Then it's not just okay, we're giving you the license for it now. Oh, maybe we want a cut of that, right? For every cartridge sold, and Nintendo's like, okay, then we got to mark the price up. Obviously, then you go to a retailer, and the retailer has to have a markup, the same as any, as any other product. And an Amiibo, I don't know. How, I actually don't know how those Amiibos are that cheap, right? I mean, because they're they're making millions of them. Right, they have a great deal. Who knows? But do I like this idea? Yeah, I just think this would this wouldn't ever sell. I think to the mainstream. Like that, but oh, that is a, that little mini controller is adorable. It actually works though, but it's no, so that's, funny. that's the it, biggest. It's fly. funny because it's, it's as big as his thumb. The whole controller, so it's like he's trying to play Rad Racer on it. Oh yeah, he was, and, he's just like, <laughs> and he he appeared to be doing fairly well at Rad Racer at that. So, uh, yeah, then he throws a, yeah he throws a Pokemon Red in there, which is actually looks pretty cute on a cartridge. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it goes, it pops down. Looks like you don't have to turn the power on off. The power's just on. You just put the cartridge in and. No, he actually oh, no, hits oh, power. Oh, he re-hits it. Okay, the red light doesn't go off. It, no, but he hits on. power, and then if you just tap reset, it resets the game. If you hold it down, it powers off the system, or if you hold it down, it powers it on. He goes to his phone. He puts in the record to add to tell it to play GBA. Okay, it's, inter it's interesting. Pie in the sky. A raspberry pie in the sky. 